Okay, uh, my name is Christy and I am happy to welcome you to the Orange County Department of Education Virtual College Fair brought to you by California Out of State and International College Fairs. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. I'm going to go over some housekeeping items. I know some of you are filtering in as I'm talking. I'll make sure I put this information in the chat for you as well. Important things to know that our awesome panelists here cannot see or hear you. So if you have a question during this live 45 minute session, you can click the Q&A button that's either at the top or bottom of your screen, depending on how you have it set up. That Q&A button is gonna be the only way that you can ask a question during this 45 minute session. If you have questions for them after, of course, make sure you are writing down their contact information or how to get a hold of someone who can answer your questions. So pay attention to that chat. It's always a good place to pick up that information as well. Um, a recording of this is going to be available as well at strivescan.com forward slash COSI. I'll make sure I put all of that into the chat uh, as well. And so to be mindful of time, because our panelists have a lot of awesome information to share, we're going to kick it off with Roosevelt University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Barons, and I am the representative from Roosevelt University. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my presentation for you all this evening. So thank you so much for joining us. So a little bit about Roosevelt University. We are a small private institution located in downtown Chicago. Um, we are very proud of the fact that we consider Chicago our campus. So our students have access to all of the wonderful amenities of the city of Chicago because we are right in the heart of it. So over 200 art galleries, landmarks, live music events, festivals, sporting uh, events that go on in the city that our students have that access to. There's about 28 miles of lakefront um, with bike trails and running trails along, like I said, along Lake Michigan, um, over four or 550 parks and um, really great outdoor space that adopt the neighborhoods um, all throughout the city. And then of course, the food. You can't go wrong with food in Chicago, particularly our pizza. I'm a little biased, um, but you do have kind of that right at your backyard. So it's an incredible opportunity and incredible location for our students. When it comes to our students, um, we have a very diverse population of students at Roosevelt University. About 45% of our students are students of color and 30% are first generation students. And those students are located in all of in our 72 plus undergraduate degrees. We also have about 48 uh, graduate degree options available to students as well. So why Roosevelt? Why come to Chicago? Why come out to the Midwest? Um, I'd love to tell you about it. So we have incredible undergraduate studies available to all of our students. Like I said, over 72 areas of studies that are sprinkled in through our five colleges, College of Arts and Science, Business, science, health, and pharmacy, education, and our Chicago College of Performing Arts. We also have a really great core um, program, which is our uh, general education program. So students come in and they get a great um, feel for the different majors, different topics that you're going to study that focuses on experiential learning, which enhances that in the classroom experience outside of the classroom. So we have different speakers that come in. You get to take advantage of, like I said, the city and all the opportunities are there to really enhance what you're learning inside the classroom. Our faculty is phenomenal. Um, over half of our classes are less than 20 students, and we really pride ourselves on our 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, this gives you an opportunity to really get to know your counselor or your, your uh, professors very well. Our faculty are experts in the areas that they are teaching, um, and we want to make sure that you are building not only relationships with them, but also with your fellow classmates, building your network, your professional network of the people that you are going to be hopefully working with someday. We also have different programs to help you be successful in college. So we have our honors and learning commons uh, to really enhance your learning and success inside and outside of the classroom to challenge you a little bit. We have over 50 student organizations uh, that help you build a community here at Roosevelt. Because we are that vertical campus right here in the city, it's called an urban campus. Um, you know, it's not the same as a you know, bigger state school with a very large campus feel. So we wanted to make sure that there's student organizations available to you so that you can build that community here on campus. And then of course, professional development and professional mentorship. The whole ultimate goal of going to college and getting your degree is getting the job afterwards. So we wanna make sure that you're prepared and you are ready to go once you graduate from Roosevelt University. 
Uh, what's really cool about our campus as well is, like I said, we are a vertical campus. So our building not only houses all of our classroom and office spaces for faculty and staff, but it's also where our students live. So the top floors of our building are actually our residence halls. So if you could be living on the 20th floor of our building and have classes down on the fifth floor. It's just a simple elevator right away. Let me tell you, in these Chicago winters, that is very beneficial for our students. Um, and it also gives you that close community and keeps everybody um, really close together, which is great. We also offer athletic teams. So we are part of the NAIA, uh, which is a division of collegiate athletics. And we have over 25 of varsity sports teams. And in addition to our beautiful Wabash building where our students live and go to classes, part of our campus is also the Historical Auditorium Theater. This is what where our uh, College of Performing Arts is housed, and it's also um, the site for over 200 student and faculty performances each year. It is a historical landmark in the city of Chicago, plus we get to have some incredible people come and visit us, um, and our students and our staff have access to those amazing once-in-a-lifetime performances at our auditorium in theater. So when it comes to applying to Roosevelt, it's pretty simple. Go directly to our website at roosevelt.edu slash apply to submit your online application. For any freshman applicants, we do take a self-reported cumulative unweighted high school GPA. Uh, testing is optional, so you don't have to send in your SAT or ACT scores unless you are applying for our nursing program, but we still encourage you to submit those test scores as well, just to make sure that we place you in the correct math and science courses. Any transfer students who are coming in, the only thing you need to submit is your official transcripts from all previously attended universities or colleges. Documents can be submitted either via mail sent to our Schaumburg location or can be sent electronically to the email address provided. Our different admissions requirements are pretty simple. For freshmen and transfer, it's a 2.0 unweighted GPA on a 4.0 scale. If your school is on a 5.0 scale or a 100 scale, no worries, no need to worry about converting it. We'll take care of that for you to make sure that your scholarship and your admissions decision is uh, provided appropriately to you. Uh, as I stated previously about our nursing program, those admissions requirements are a little bit different. Uh, if anyone has questions about those, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, I'll also be providing my email address and you can send those to me via email after the presentation. So when it comes to our Roosevelt scholarships, we have several different scholarship opportunities for our incoming students. Uh, first off, we have our need-based grant, which is available to freshmen and transfer students, including out-of-state tuition, out-of-state students. Um, and those amounts are based off of your FAFSA information. So we're already past October 1st. So if you haven't gotten your FAFSA in, get that in as soon as possible and add Roosevelt University to your list of schools. We also have a merit-based scholarship, which is based off of your high school GPA or your college GPA. And then we also have a housing grant available to students who are taking advantage of living in our dorms, uh, in our facilities. And again, that is also based off of your FAFSA information. For transfer students, we also have additional scholarships available. So if you're looking to potentially transfer um, after your two years at a community college, you will have opportunities there as well. And we do have the Dreamers grant available uh, for undocumented and DACA students. So if you are interested in coming to visit, here's just a little bit more information about campus visits, scheduling an in-person or virtual appointment. And I will go ahead and put my contact information in the chat along with a link to our website. Um, looks like my time is up. So thank you all so much for joining us. And please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to throw them in the Q&A. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Newman University. Hey, everybody. All right. As she said, I am Georgia. I'm from Newman University. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions. Um, on another note, did you guys see that performance hall at Roosevelt? That was really pretty. So kudos, Roosevelt. I can see why it's a landmark. Um, I get to tell you a little bit about Newman University, and I'm sure if you're anywhere in or near California, you've probably never heard of us before, but that's okay because you're going to leave with this little Midwest gem under your belt today. Um, I get to tell you a little bit more about us. Uh, so Newman University is located in Wichita, Kansas. We are smack dab in the middle of the United States, uh, which is really nice because it's a nice place to live. You get kind of the city environment, which is the biggest city in Kansas, uh, without all of the crazy traffic, without um, huge cost of living. Because uh, in addition to going to school somewhere, you also have to pay to live there. And I think it's pretty affordable to live in Wichita. 
Um, I love our campus. Um, as you can see, we're kind of five minutes west of downtown Wichita. Uh, you can see one of the quintessential Kansas storms rolling in. And if you're somebody that really likes to experience all of the seasons in the course of one day, this is the place for you. We get a little bit of everything pretty much every day of the week. Uh, it could be 90 degrees in the afternoon, but it was 30 degrees this morning. Um, this is our campus. It's pretty small. It's a 61 acre park like campus. It's right outside Wichita, Kansas. Um, we would love for you to come visit if you have the capacity to do so, but we are also offering virtual visits. Uh, and I like to say some of the more unique things about Wichita. Uh, we are the air capital of the world. So our mascot is the Jets and our mascot is actually Johnny Jet. He's a fighter pilot. Um, I always like to tell people that Harrison Ford is like an avid aviator. So he comes here multiple times a year to have his aircraft serviced. And he always spends a few days in Wichita. So there's always Harrison Ford sightings. Uh, weirdly enough, today, apparently Serena Williams was in Wichita um, eating at various eateries and nobody recognized her. So, oops. Um, Newman University is a Catholic college. We were established in 1933 by a group of Catholic sisters called the Adores of the Blood of Christ. And we're named after that little guy, St. John Henry Newman. Uh, he had some really cool ideas about what it meant to get a Catholic college education. So we believe all of our students should be very well-rounded. Our core curriculum is very interdisciplinary. Um, and even though we are a Catholic college, only about 40% of our student body is actually Catholic. Um, so we have still a pretty diverse student body here. Um, this is our mission statement. Uh, and one of the big things we want to go out and do is empower you to transform society. I know that sounds really overwhelming, but you can do that in little ways every day. Uh, we're a pretty small school. We only have a little over 1,200 students on campus, uh, 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and that means our classes on average are about 15 students. Um, so if you're looking for a school that uh, maybe has some good STEM programs, healthcare, and you want to be in those smaller classes, a little bit more personal attention, this is definitely a place where they're going to notice if you don't show up or you're late, and they want you to participate. They want to hear what you have to say. Um, this is a list of our majors on campus. We also have some pre-professional programs that I'll show you. We're probably most known for things science and healthcare related. So we have a lot of students studying biology, biochem, chemistry with the purpose of going to a professional program for grad school. But we also have things like nursing, respiratory care, sonography, um, rad tech. Uh, I came in as a theology major, um, but we also have a lot of offerings in the business uh, administration degree. And we were originally found as a school of education. So we have early childhood, elementary, and secondary. Um, if you're looking to go into the sciences, this is a lot of what our students are doing sciences for. They wanna to go to one of these professional schools. The only one on here that's not specifically science related is pre-law and you can pretty much major in anything and go to law school. Uh, we have some really cool state-of-the-art science facilities, including an anatomy lab with human cadavers for dissection each year. And we also share this lab with the KU School of Medicine here in Wichita. Uh, we are NCAA Division II. We compete in the MIAA Conference, which has a lot of schools in Kansas. Uh, we can offer scholarships for pretty much anything on this list. And then the intramural stuff is just for fun. I came here for the awesome bowling team uh, and just kind of stuck around and worked in admissions after. Uh, we have a free online application. You do not have to pay to apply. It's super quick and easy. It takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, you don't need to submit recommendations or essays. And then when you're done, you just have to send us an official transcript. Uh, we've been test optional for a few years, so if you want to send a test score, you can. It might help with your um, scholarship here, but you really just need to show us that you have at least a 2.25 cumulative GPA, and we'll take weighted or unweighted, whatever's listed as higher on your transcript. Now, I do have GPA and ACT listed here because the way that we award your automatic scholarship at the time of acceptance is um, if you send us a GPA and a test score, we'll give you the amount that's highest. So you have a little bit higher GPA, lower ACT, we're gonna give you based off of your GPA. And all of these amounts are every year for four years, as long as you maintain at least a 2.0. We also have um, a guaranteed scholarship of at least $14,000, if not more on this scale. If you're graduating from a Catholic high school or if you're Catholic and maybe graduating from a public school or home school and you're nominated by your parish priest. Uh, we also have some other scholarships. Uh, we have a full tuition award. We have ones for community service our honors program, music, arts and theater, athletics. Um, so if you're looking for maybe a smaller school, uh, religiously affiliated or not, that's in uh, a larger urban environment uh, with smaller classes, this might be a good place for you. 
Uh, and if you're not able to come out and visit here in Wichita, maybe visit some other similar schools in California or wherever you're at and see what fits you best and then um, see if you might like to apply to Newman. If you'd like, you can scan this and download our custom view book. Um, otherwise, I'll put my information in the chat and uh, if you want, you can text or call or email. Thanks all, enjoy the rest of the virtual fair. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Rollins College. Thanks very much for that, Christy, and thank you all for giving us some of your time tonight. My name is Frank Thomas. My pronouns are he, him, and his, and I am from beautiful Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida. You can see my contact information over my shoulder as well as a, an aerial view of our college. And uh, I just want to spend a little time giving you some information about this, the oldest college in Florida. We've been providing a traditional liberal arts education here on the shores of Lake Virginia for almost 150 years. Um, because of the study abroad programs here, the community engagement uh, uh, insistence that we have in all of our degrees, the beautiful campus that's consistently voted one of the most beautiful in America and several other reasons, US News and World Report has once again ranked Rollins College as the number one regional university in the South. If you're able to see well enough on your screen and you look over to the far right, you'll see the buildings of downtown Orlando, Florida. So we're located about 20 minutes from downtown Orlando, about 40 minutes from Disney, about 60 minutes from the Atlantic beaches, but you don't have to drive an hour to the beach because we're one of the few colleges in America with a beach on campus. Um, and as a college of liberal arts, we do offer life sciences like biology, chemistry, and physics. We offer performing arts like music, theater, and dance. They even have scholarships that you can audition for and a number of other programs of study. Just to give you a snapshot of our student body, we are a small college, again, one of those hidden gems that you're learning about tonight with about 2,100 students. As Florida's oldest college, about half of our students are Floridian and the rest are coming to us from the rest of the world. We're slightly over one quarter students of color with a long-term goal of getting that to about one third so that our student body and also our faculty and staff more closely reflect the community around us. And you're really looking for an answer to one question tonight, is Rollins College right for me? And the answer to that comes in our Rollins Gateway. That's our signature approach to a modern liberal arts education. Of course, it starts in the classroom with a future-proof education, but also we're going to be pushing you out there into the community to engage with the world around you. That's liberal arts in action. All of those things leading to the results that you're looking for when selecting a college. Small student to faculty ratio, small average class sizes. In fact, very similar numbers to my colleagues that you've already heard from tonight. And even though you have the opportunity to do student led research and get paid for that while you're an undergraduate, our faculty recognize that your experience in the classroom is the most important thing. And that's why Rollins is consistently recognized for its commitment to undergraduate teaching. Now, in addition to your major, we're going to make sure that you get a broad foundation in a lot of other courses and in the liberal arts, as well as a chance to explore and follow your bliss with your electives, recognizing the fact that most careers today don't have a degree named after them. So it's not as simple as wanting to be an accountant, getting an accounting degree, and going to work for an accounting firm. And that's where a liberal arts education can really help prepare you for the world, for the unknown, for changes in the future economy, for changes in your interest to be able to change careers, jobs, or companies without necessarily having to go back to school and get another degree. And a key part of that uh, liberal arts in action is study abroad. More than three fourths of Rollins students will study abroad for a semester during their time with us. Uh, we offer programs in dozens of countries in every one of our majors. You'll earn credit towards your degree so that you stay on time for a four-year graduation. And one of the best parts is your financial aid package goes with you. To, to help you pay for that first study abroad program. But that's not the only way that we encourage our students to engage with the world around them. In fact, every one of you is probably familiar with the most famous person to ever graduate from Rollins College, and that's Mr. Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers is universally beloved because of his expressions of care and compassion for those around him. And we constantly push our students in every major and every program of study to engage with the world, to go on immersive spring breaks or alternative breaks, to participate in these community engagement projects because your education in a college is not just about your major, it's also about life. It's also about being prepared to uh, interact with the world and to be successful. And it's literally in our mission statement that we're preparing you to have productive careers and meaningful lives. Those five words animate what I do 
as an admission counselor. Dozens of ways for you to be involved on campus with organizations, very easy for you to start your own. And about a third of our students will be involved with Greek life on campus. We're also a division two college for many sports that you see here and division one for our men's and women's water ski program. If you're interested in participating in a varsity sport, you can contact your admission counselor and I can help arrange um, uh, an introduction for you. Many of these sports, but not all of them, offer athletic scholarships. But the bottom line to that Rollins Gateway is this placement rate. 97% of our students working in grad school or having made other plans within 12 months of graduation. Because of our strong connections with major companies and prestigious graduate schools, the Rollins graduate is not spending a lot of time looking for their next step. They probably know what it is before they've graduated. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Orlando is so much more than the home of the mouse. It's one of the fastest growing cities in America. It is, uh, Rollins is uh, one of the most innovative schools in the South, according to US News and World Report. The fastest job growth from 21 to 22 of any city in the country, the seventh busiest airport in the world. So it's very easy for you to get around the country, get home and to get other parts of the world. We do use an unweighted GPA, um, which we'll recalculate for you. And we have been test optional for 17 years. So we really do use a holistic review of your application. These other items, your recommendation, your involvement, and your essay are just as important as the numbers on your application. And you can talk to your admission counselor if you have any questions about what that should look like. We do offer early decision, which I'm going to skip past here just to remind you that that deadline is November 15th. And we also have a priority scholarship deadline for our regular decision plan. That is also November 15th, but we will accept applications as late as February 1st. We encourage all students and families to complete the FAFSA because it opens doors to grants from the state and from the college itself, as well as federally backed programs. The vast majority of our students are receiving financial aid from us and our scholarships run as high as 32,000 a year, which is about 60% the cost of tuition. I noticed tonight that we have several counselors on the call as well as students. So as I conclude, I'm going to drop into the chat a webpage for our students who are interested in applying and getting more information and a webpage for our high school counselors that contains everything that you need to know. My contact information is over my shoulder and will also be in the chat. Thanks very much for your time. All right, thank you, Frank. Next up, we have College for Creative Studies. All right, let me share my screen here. I loved that um, that Orlando was named one of the top fun schools. I didn't know that there was an, um, a thing for that. So um, I'm Olivia Izinga. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. We are all a uh, visual art and design school. We are in the Midtown uh, Cultural Center of Detroit. Uh, so we're about maybe a four, four and a half hour drive uh, to Chicago. So um, we have a lot of students who are always going back and forth on the weekends. There's a lot of things that you can do within driving distance of Detroit. Uh, so um, we're a little gem in the Midwest, like a lot of the other schools here. Uh, a lot of innovation and design going on in the city of Detroit. Not a lot of people know about Detroit. It's kind of one of those cities where you have to believe or um, see it to believe it. We were named one of the, um, the first city of design in the US um, by the United Nations a couple years ago. Um, so we are one of the, um, the only city of design um, nominated by the UN. And why this is not, um, there we go. Um, so CCS, we're highly accredited. We are a private uh, visual art and design school. Like I said, we offer 13 different majors in, uh, in arts, in design, illustration, animation, concept design, all these different programs that we have, definitely most known for transportation design. We have about 1400, 1500 students on our campus. So it's again, pretty small compared to um, other art schools out there. Uh, most of our faculty members are working part-time uh, working at the college is a part is a is a side gig for them because they're working in their industries right now. They're not um, they're working in their industries to give real world experience and connections to, to our. So like I said, about 1400 students, we have students from all over the US and around the world too. really, really small classroom sizes. So uh, the average amount of students per faculty member are nine to one and the highest uh, the, the largest classes that you'll have. Uh, with students are 20 students or so, and that's in your liberal arts classes. So like I said, uh, 13 different majors. We also have graduate programs and minors as well. Like I said, transportation design, definitely what we're most known for. Very few colleges in the country have it. So earning a degree from CCS. Uh, these are some of the uh, awards that we've gotten in the past that we're very proud of. 
uh, we're definitely a very military friendly school. A lot of uh, veterans that come to us and we connect with them, work with them on their financial aid, um, transferring credits, all this kind of stuff. Uh, we were named one of the best value schools by Payscale Magazine. And what that was talking about was a return of investment specifically for art schools. Um, they got information from graduates from CCS, from um, data from LinkedIn, comparing and contrasting to other art schools as well. So you see a lot of companies here, a lot of big name companies that we've all heard of. Um, maybe your dream job is to work at one of these companies. We have students who are working here doing internships, sometimes remotely, sometimes in person. And we also have students who are going on to graduate and get jobs here. A lot of our faculty members have connections with the industries, with the cool places that you wanna work and they're totally cool with getting you jobs there too. So numbers, let's talk about those. 96% of uh, CCS alumni are getting jobs within that first year of graduation. So the whole starving artist stigma, not really a thing. Uh, so what, um, you can also find some of this information on our website, but salary ranges by major. Uh, these are important things to note, the return of investment and to understand that, yeah, you're not gonna be a starving artist if you go to CCS. We have a lot of alumni working at Apple, this uh, statistic or, number actually does need to be updated. And uh, we have more uh, alumni working and the big three at FCA, at GM, at, um, at Ford as well in the design studios more than other colleges do. So if you're going to apply to CCS, maybe you are a senior right now in high school and you're thinking about your college options. So our application process is pretty simple. We just need you to fill out our online application. You can do that on the Common App or on our website. And we also need to see your high school transcript. So we're looking for a 2.5 GPA or higher. The average uh, freshman's GPA was around a 3.4, 3.5 this year, just to give you some perspective. We also need to see a portfolio of your best artwork. So eight to 12 pieces of your best artwork doesn't necessarily need to be major specific. We wanna see what you do best, what you love the most. And we don't need to see uh, ACT or SAT scores. Even if you submit those, even if you score really well, they're not gonna make a difference with your admissions decision. So, um, so even if you submit those, uh, we're not gonna look at them. So like other colleges, we do want you to fill out that financial aid application. So since October 1st has passed, uh, that's when the FAFSA opens up, definitely start filling those things out. Fill out those forms so you can see what grants and loans you're eligible for to help finance your education. And the average amount of scholarship that a student dis, um, received this year with their uh, admissions decision was around $22,000. So whatever amount that you get awarded, that amount is going to be awarded all four years at CCS. And if you wanna learn more about the college, we definitely do virtual visits. We do um, in-person tours um, on the weekends sometimes and during the week. If you want more information on CCS, we have these QR codes on our website as well. And I will put my admissions uh, information in the chat. And if you apply to CCS, I'd be the one helping you out with your application. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Next up we have Lawrence. Technological University. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, my name is Aubrey Kassan. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Lawrence Tech. And we are located in Southfield, Michigan, so just down the street from Olivia. Um, we originally began as Lawrence Institute of Technology in 1932, and we were founded uh, by the Lawrence brothers as a way for working adults to get an engineering education in the evening. We had a really good relationship with the Ford family, and they actually gave us space to start our university just adjacent to the Model T plant. So we have changed a lot over the years. In the 50s, we moved to Southfield, where we're located now, which is about 15 minutes northwest of downtown Detroit. And in the 80s, we became a university offering um, close to 100 degree programs. But one thing that has always stayed the same at the university is our motto of theory and practice education. And really what this means at the university is your classes are very important, but just as important as everything you're going to do outside of the classroom. Um, and this is done through a variety of ways when you're a student. Um, first and foremost would be our project-based curriculum where you'll do either senior projects, quest projects, or team projects. We have a really strong push for research at the undergraduate level as well. So that could be alongside a faculty member or uh, an industry-sponsored research project, which is really common as well. 
Um, we have really impressive labs and studios on campus. Um, some of them are like our Center for Innovative Materials Research. We have a full-scale fire chamber in there that hosts the Humvee. Years ago, we were featured on Modern Marvels for that. And then we have a lot of students who will participate in our competition teams. We have our Blue Devil Motorsports for our Society of Automotive Engineering students. Um, we have our ISACA cybersecurity competition. Our computer science students compete in our intelligent ground vehicle competition. And they actually have an autonomous vehicle on campus where our students are able to um, use that to get around class. By the numbers, we are a small school. We have about 3,000 students. And what this means for you is really small class sizes. Our average class size is about 17. And we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. I'm just going to briefly talk about our four different colleges. Um, we have our College of Architecture and Design. We're the largest college of architecture in Michigan, and more than half of Michigan's architects went to our school. So it's definitely one of our most popular degree programs. We have a Bachelor of Science in Architecture, and then also a direct entry Master of Architecture, which is the accredited degree. So you'd enter that as a freshman and in five years leave with that. We also have design programs, anything from game design to transportation design as well. Next is our College of Arts and Sciences. This is probably our most diverse college on campus in terms of what we offer. Um, it houses some of our more traditional programs like biology, chemistry, physics, um, but then we also have things like media communication. We're in a really good location where um, the Detroit news stations are really just across campus, so students really enjoy that. Our computer science degree is one of our most popular as well, and that's another direct entry master of science entering as a freshman. And for those of you who looking, are looking for health sciences, we have a nursing program with a practice partnership with Ascension Health as well. We actually have a master of, uh, sorry, master of physician assistant studies as well. So if you're looking to go on to PA school, we have that. Next is our College of Business and IT, anything from business administration to information technology, business data analytics, definitely a smaller college on campus. And then last but not least, we have our College of Engineering, um, houses all of our different engineering programs, anything from architectural engineering to robotics engineering. I should mention that all of our programs are direct and mixed. When you apply to the university, you apply directly to your major, you're admitted to your major from day one and start taking major coursework right away. When you apply to the university, we are rolling admissions, but we do encourage you to apply by Thanksgiving to have the most scholarship opportunities. When you apply, we recalculate your GPA, so we're only looking at your core coursework. For fall 2023, we are still test optional, and I do anticipate that this will continue in the future as well. And then we do have an essay component. We really just wanna know more about you so you can truly write about anything. We're a holistic review, so we're looking for grade trends, course selection, and things like that. Our average incoming freshman has about a 3.5 GPA. Next are our scholarships. So when you apply to the university and you're admitted, you're automatically reviewed for our merit scholarships. These begin at a 3.0, and they range from 4,500 a year up to 16,000, and they're all renewable as long as you maintain your GPA. We then have the opportunity for you to receive a secondary scholarship as well. And these are all the, the other ones you see listed here. If you're coming from out of state, we have our National Blue Devil Scholarship. If you have a 3.0, it's an automatic $5,000 a year scholarship as well. We do have a lot of fun at the university, although we are really academically focused. We are a member of the NAIA for National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. Um, and you can see all of our varsity sports here, our newest one being um, eSports, cheerleading, and ice hockey. We have uh, intramural sports as well, and marching band and pep band also gives athletic scholarships. Uh, we have a lot of fun on campus in terms of our student organizations. Our students are really involved on campus, whether it's a honor society or a special interest group. We have a very active Greek life. So if you're looking to join a fraternity or sorority, there's a lot of options for the, you there. Uh, we have our Society for Dramatic Arts on campus. Um, they put on our fall play and our spring musical as well. So there's really always something happening on campus. One of the pictures that you saw was our um, fall homecoming concert that we have every year. Um, these are just some of the different areas where we are recognized. I'm not going to talk uh, long about these, but we um, are most impressed with our outcomes. About 92% of our students have a job at the point of graduation in their field, and it is well paid too. Uh, we're in the top 11% nationally for our alumni salaries, and we're one of the highest in Southeast Michigan. 
I definitely want to invite you to come to campus. Um, we do still have some virtual tour options or virtual phone meetings, or you can schedule a time for a financial aid counselor to give you a call and talk to you. We also have a number of in-person tours as well. And as I sign off, I'm going to put my contact information and our fee waiver code in the um, chat. Thanks. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Wentworth Institute of Technology. All right, hi everyone. Give me one second here. All right. Um, like I was introduced, my name is Emily Casey. I'm from Wentworth Institute of Technology located in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm going to bring us home tonight. Um, I know you've gotten some great information from all of these different schools. Wentworth is a smaller institution really specializing in STEM fields, given our name, um, but we are a full scale university. So offering both uh, bachelor's and master's degree programs. <clears throat> On the screen here, you can see that we really do specialize in these fields. We offer these 22 majors. Um, and that's it. So we're not one of those schools with 100 plus offerings. We really are experts in our field here. And I just want to highlight some of the kind of most popular majors or ones we're most well known for. So we have our School of Engineering that offers eight different disciplines of engineering, um, one of them being just engineering. So we don't expect students necessarily to have tried out seven different types of engineering. So knowing that you can come in as an engineering major, you can stick with that all four years. You can add minors, add concentrations. Um, or within your first year, if you know, you're in our intro rotational course where we make you try out all the different types of engineering, we're happy to change your major and move you into a, a program that maybe you are discovering for the first time or didn't realize or expect to have a passion for. We're also really well known for our computing programs. Um, so computer science being incredibly popular, but things like cybersecurity, data science, IT, computer networking, applied mathematics. Um, so there's a lot in that realm that our students will um, be able to take advantage of. The other bigger programs we're known for are our architecture and design programs. So our architecture program um, being a four plus one option for students, which does set them up for licensures. If you are considering the field of architecture, a master's is required for that licensure. So looking at a one year program um, as opposed to the traditional three years for a master's of architecture is definitely something to consider but knowing that we also have an industrial and interior design program. And then lastly, um, our School of Management houses our business management program. And then also the program that we are actually number one in the country for is construction management. So a little bit more unique in that program. Boston is a fantastic place to study construction. And I think a huge advantage for that program too is that at Wentworth, you're surrounded by students in civil engineering, you're surrounded by students in architecture. So you really have a great peer resource being the other programs that we offer at Wentworth. And then I mentioned architecture as a plus one, uh, but we do have a handful of other plus ones and these are consistently rolling out. Nothing students need to commit to or make decisions about now, but by the time they're a junior senior, we'll start those conversations at Wentworth um, about the potential of sticking around for two extra semesters um, and, and coming out with an entire master's degree in that time. Like I mentioned, Wentworth is a smaller school. So we're about 4,000 total undergraduate students. That's 16 to one student to faculty ratio an average class size of 18. Really making sure that our students are getting that kind of one-on-one -on -one individual attention from their faculty members. When you're taking something like calculus or physics or you know some of those more advanced classes, I think you want to be able to raise your hand in class and ask a question you know, or swing by office hours and have that relationship with your faculty member. At Wentworth, we're 100% faculty taught, which does mean even though we have master's programs and graduate students, our classes are actually never led on um, by those students on behalf of professors. So there's no TA or graduate student leading your class. You're always going to get the expertise of that professor. Given our majors, most students are able to assume this on their own, but we take a very project-based approach to our classes. Students will spend so much time across those 61 labs or studios, really getting into the specifics and needs of their program. So if you're in cybersecurity, you're going to spend a lot of time in our brand new artificial intelligence lab. Architecture students, you probably won't spend too much time in that artificial intelligence lab. You're going to spend most of your time in studio. Um, so there's a lot of different spaces on our campus to meet those different hands-on learning needs. 
And in kind of combination with that hands-on learning, this is the thing Wentworth is most well-known for and the thing I think we do best and most unique about our education is that we are a co-op institution. So every single major at Wentworth has to complete two full semesters of co-op. If you're not familiar with the term co-op, it's similar to an internship position. The responsibilities of co-op students tend to be a little bit more career oriented though. Our students are working two full-time paid jobs in their field as a graduation requirement. So spring of your junior year and fall of your senior year, you will not take classes and you will not pay tuition. You are actually just making money at a full-time rate while working that full-time job, gaining that experience, growing your professional network. That can be completed anywhere. So I know, especially if you are on the West Coast um, and you know you want to go back to the West Coast after college graduation, you can build your, those professional roots out here so that when you are graduating, you already have some companies in the area that you've worked with. If you know you want to stay on the East Coast, Boston is a great place to work in the STEM field so you could live on our campus and complete those co-ops on campus as well. And then I mentioned we are in Boston. Um, we are really fortunate where we're located. We are just one of 35 colleges in the city of Boston. So when you think of New England, a lot of people think of higher education. We are a big hub for that, but Boston especially uh, is home to about 150,000 college students. I think that gives Wentworth students this huge benefit that you have our small campus to call home, you have the small class sizes, guaranteed housing for four years, a quad, kind of that more campus feel. If you want to feel part of something significantly bigger, we are part of this Fenway community um, where the Red Sox play. It's less than a mile for our students. There's $9 college student uh, tickets to get into Red Sox games, so a huge advantage for our students. And then I'll just leave our, our deadlines up here. Just know they're coming down with that November 1st deadline. Um, we're on the common application for our students and I'm your direct contact. So if students have questions um, or anything additional as they work through their applications, we're happy to help. All right, thank you. If I could have all the panelists come back on camera. Um, and then Emily, there is a Q&A that you can uh, write in an answer whenever you have an opportunity. I'm gonna share my screen here. We're gonna go in the same order that uh, these folks presented in. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process, starting with Roosevelt University? Yeah, probably two major pieces of advice that I would give anyone going through the college search process. Number one, visit. Um, the great thing, I, probably one of the good things about COVID is that we all were forced to kind of create these virtual tours. So if you are, if you aren't able to come and visit these specific schools, take advantage of the virtual tours. You're going to be spending at least the next four years at these places. So you want to make sure that you feel comfortable physically there. Uh, and then the second piece of advice is use your admissions counselor. That's what we're here for. That's what all of these incredible people on this, um, this virtual fair tonight, we are here to help you. So use us. You have our contact information send us an email, even if you think it's a silly question, make sure that you're uh, keeping in contact with your admissions counselor. I would say, um, you know, we I get a lot of students who visit, um, that was gonna be mine, so you took it from me. But um, we get a lot of students who visit, and you know, the number one question I try not to ask students is, do you have any questions? Because the answer is always a resounding no. Um, have an idea of maybe what you're wanting out of a college before you go visit so that while you're there, you can kind of be checking things off of your list. Um, I know when my husband and I were looking at houses, we had like a must have list, a list of deal breakers. Like if it had that, it was out. And then some stuff that would be kind of like wish list items. And if you go through um, visits and getting information from school with kind of that lens, it might be a little bit helpful for you to come up with questions that are important to you in the process. Nearly every college in America has an online tool called the net price calculator that allows you to put in some of your academic and family information and it will pull in the cost and scholarship information for that college and give you a report that will estimate the type of scholarship you'd be eligible for based on the info you put in and the types of federal uh, loans and grants, college grants and other financial aid, and then a bottom line out of pocket estimated cost for your family per year. Uh, pretty much every school has one. I'm dropping the link to the Rollins College one in the chat, and it's a great tool to help you make sure that a college you're pursuing will fit in with your families and your financial plans before you get too far in the process. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good one. Um, along with that, as, as other people are saying, visit the college campuses, picture yourself and those schools if you can see yourself there for the next four years. Uh, when you are comparing and contrasting colleges that you might be interested in, especially with art schools in particular, look at what alumni are doing. Look at the kind of artwork that is on their websites under each of those majors. So if you're interested in illustration and you're looking at such and such college and you're looking at what kind of artwork those illustration students are doing, see what they're doing at other art schools too. Um, see what kind of places that students are working, getting jobs, internships. And if that resonates with you, maybe those are places that you'd want to apply to. Somebody already mentioned, um, you know, using your admissions counselor as a resource, but I'd also encourage you to, um, you know, go ahead and try to talk to faculty members at the school you're looking um, at. Our faculty are just dying to talk to prospective students, so don't be afraid to ask. Um, and I'm sure other schools are the same, that they love to meet those students and love to talk to you about what your goals are. So, Yeah, and I'll add in quickly, my biggest piece of advice for students is to be your authentic self in this process. Um, just because some of us specialize in programs, you know, just because you're an engineer doesn't mean you can't love art or music or, um, you know, English as well. So be your authentic self, it'd be really boring if our campus was just filled with robotic students or, you know, just filled with one type of student. So um, don't be afraid to be yourself and, and ask about those things that matter to you. All right, great advice from everyone. Uh, wrapping up just in time, uh, thank you so much to our panelists. We appreciate your expertise and you taking the time out to share. Uh, and then the folks out there that are either watching this live or watching this recording, uh, we wish you the best of luck. Please reach out to these folks. They're here to help you. This is what they do. They want to make sure that they that you find the right fit. Um, so I put this information in the chat. Uh, there is a quick survey when you leave here. Your feedback is very important to us. Definitely keep an eye out for more sessions, whether they're in person or virtual. And a recording of this is available online at strivescan.com. And that link is also in the chat as well. So with that, I wish you folks the best of luck and I hope you have a fantastic night. Farewell.